Hey guys. How's everybody doing? Welcome to the last Joel of a stream. Week 12. We did it. We made it. I'm going to warm up a little bit and then we'll get started. Hope everybody had a good weekend, all two of us. We played Prokofiev's Romeo and Juliet, Wagner's Tristan and Isolde, the uh, Prelude plus the Lieb, Liebestode, and then uh, this piano concerto by Mason, no, sorry, Martin Kennedy. Pretty cool piece, actually. Um, really enjoyed it. So This is, uh, like I said, this is the last week of the Jolve. Let me get my pages in order here. Make sure uh, I'll be good to go. Um, as most of you know, but some of you might not know, I started this back in November. <clears throat> I started this back in November and I thought to myself, what would it be like if somebody just live streamed their practice and, po and then just said, this is how I practice and people might be able to say, Oh, nice. That's how this guy practices. Maybe I learned something, or maybe I would do things differently. Maybe we should talk about it. That might be kind of nice. What's up, Patrick? How you doing, man? Um, I added Longinati number four, but it'll be in like four or five weeks because a bunch of people, it's pretty cool, a bunch of people um, uh, went in on it. So, uh, Salvador, how's it going, man? I promise you that I'm going to do my best to answer your question in this stream. Um so we started out and we were, um, you know, we started off things really slowly. For those of you that were at the very first stream, basically couldn't play this piece at all. And so I've progressed um, quite a bit, I think, in the last 11 hours of practice. We're going to add one more hour here. Um, we're going to start this piece off with a 95% run. So I'm going to take all the tempos that I want to go and I'm going to do 95% of the um of the tempos that i want to go and then we will probably um we probably will do uh each section one or maybe two times at like 60 or 65 percent just to cover it and that's going to be all um like i was saying we had a heavy week i don't know kind of a heavy week this week we did prokofiev's romeo and juliet um a wagner the tristan and his old prelude with the Liebestode, and then martin kenny's Piano Concerto, very cool program, but uh, with my job, I got to play first on everything, so it kind of beat me up a little bit. Um, for those of you that haven't checked it out on my Facebook, I left a clip of the dress rehearsal, uh, which should be pretty cool if you want to check that out. So, um, all right. So I think we're going to get started. My pages are in order. So we're going to do the opening here. I'm going to check it out at... Um, so it says the opening is 114, 114. Just so anybody wants to know, you take the tempo you want to go, you hit the little X right there, and then for 95%, you type in 0.95, and then there's these two lines down here, that's an equal sign. You hit it, we're at 108 for our tempo. So you type in 108, and away we go.
still a little bit pissed no one told me that the second vowel for high D-flat is a magic bullet. Uh, I don't know how you didn't know that, but everybody everybody knows that. Um, except for me. I also didn't know that. All right, here we go. 7, 126 times 0.95. We're at 120. tell you this tempo feels a lot faster than it did last time I played this Mason thank you so much man I really appreciate that here we go, the, the uh, muted section at 138 beats per minute. Sorry, I forgot to switch the music. Um, Patrick, I'll catch you at the end, man, if you don't mind. Um, the triple tongue section didn't go as well as I really hoped it would have, but sometimes that happens. Uh, we'll catch 19 to 21, and then I'll switch the, um, the, the music.
Also, let me know if the mics sound okay. All right, here's where we find out if everything worked. From 25 to 30 at 122 beats per minute. That was okay. That worked pretty good. Gosh, that's such a fun section to play. Really, really fun section to play. All right, we're gonna go 31 to 35. Still at 122 beats per minute. There it is. That's how that's supposed to end. It's, you see it says ad lib right here. I'll, I'll zoom in so everybody can see it. It says ad lib right there. And basically what I interpret that to mean is I can just try to play the highest note I possibly can.
Oh, all right. So that is the Jolive Concertino. Let's go back to my face. Jolive Concertino at 95% tempo. Um, I feel, generally speaking, that went very well. Um, I'm very happy with the progress. Uh, I'm kind of shocked, actually. Um, I, for those people that know me, I, I learn music quickly. I have a good ear. I know that I have a good ear. And so I've always learned music pretty quickly. But this to me is the next step. You know, when I learned the, I learned the Tomasi Trumpet Concerto when I was a senior in college. And it took me kind of the whole year to really nail it down and figure it out. And I'm a better trumpet player now. But even when I was in grad school, I was still struggling when playing the Tomasi to a certain extent. Not necessarily, I still played well, right? I still played the piece well, but I was kind of struggling from time to time um, when playing it. And not that I'm not struggling here or there, it's just I learned this in such a compact amount of time. In the last 12 weeks, I've practiced this for 12 hours. So let's do some math. So uh, 12 weeks times seven days, right? Times 60, which is six, no, I'm sorry. 12 weeks times, what am I doing? What am I trying to figure out here? Somebody help me out. 12 weeks times seven days, that's how many days times 24, because there's 24 hours in a day. So we had, in the last 12 weeks, 2,016 hours, right? And I practiced them for a total of 12 of those. So that means, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what that means. But basically, I practiced for 1 68th of that time. Now, if we, I don't know, I'm just a big fan and I'm becoming, yeah, dude, the math part of this though is like a little sketch, you know what I mean? Um, so uh, what I've learned in this, I'm going to pin that comment. Everyone going to see that for the rest of this stream. Um, what I've learned from this, and like I said, it's it, it has kind of shocked me, is it's amazing to me. It's amazing to me how quickly I've learned this. And I, I just don't think it applies just to me. And so... Um, I'm going to leave this blog post here. Um, not spit. All right. There you go, everybody. Everybody, all five people that are here, I would really encourage you guys to look look this over and think about it you know i've been practicing I've been, this is basically how i've been practicing when i've done the jolove you can go back and watch all the archive of this thing and see that i haven't done anything else other than this and i've like i said i've learned this piece in a very short amount of time and i've learned it deeply and i've learned it well and i think that that is um i think that's something worth considering right so, um, Patrick, to answer your question, I do plan on, if I can put it together, I would love to, what's going on here? All right, hold on, guys.
Sorry about that, everybody. I had to plug in my Ethernet cable. My kid is watching The Incredibles 2, and I think it's slowing down the internet. So um, check out that article. I would really think about... Um, yeah, right. As I would really think about how it um, might affect you, how it might make, uh, make your practicing more efficient. I just think there's something to it. I'm, I'm going to play through some of these sections slowly again here. Um, I'm going to go to the end. I'm going to play this two times because it felt good, but um, I'm going to need some slow work here, okay? So we're going to go at 60%. Oh, so Patrick, to answer your question, um, yeah, I plan on performing this. If I can do it, I'm going to try to get Becca... Um, Becca Zeisler to play Zeisler Zeisler. I don't know. She's going to be mad at me that I don't know that. Um, I'm going to try to get her to play it, but she'll be in Lubbock, and I'll be here. And so we're going to work that out. I, I think it's possible, and we're going to work that out to make it happen. So I'm going to practice this section at 25, and I'm going to do that next week on stream as the final thing here. So 128 times 0.6. We're gonna do a couple, we're gonna do two repetitions at 76% tempo, or at um, 76 beats per minute, rather. We're gonna get a couple in real, real fast on the end here. Uh, we'll go one more time. Let's move on to um, I'm going to get the treble tongue in section again. Just going to do it one time at 60 percent just for posterity's sake here. The 113 times 0.6. Uh, uh, it won't be on Facebook live. I don't know. She sent me a website at one point. 
um, that she said this that this would work. I don't know how it's going to work, but supposedly it's going to work. And if it doesn't work, I'll just stand up and play the Joel of A and, and perform it straight through to the best of my ability next week. up cheerios um all right that's that section what's another sec that this section went great i was very happy i, th I said this last stream but this muted triple tonguing section was something i was like i don't understand this at all this is ridiculous and um now i feel like i completely understand it and i can play it like every time and it's just crazy it, it really proved to me that my inability to play this had nothing to do with my actual ability, but rather what I understood about this. That's something I've learned um, quite a bit from this. Um, quite a bit from this process is that um, basically when I understand something deeply, I can play it almost every single time, and and I, that's not something I've had for. Oh, hi, Jamie. I'm so sorry I missed you. That was very rude of me. Patrick also joined. I'm sorry, you guys. That was not cool of me. I apologize. So I've learned, and I hope that it, it, people can take from that this same lesson, that um, when you learn something slowly and you learn it deeply, that's really where consistency is um, built from, I think. Where instead of, oh, I can play it once, it's cool, really just taking the time to play something slow for a little while at the beginning of the process can make such a huge difference in your ability to play it every single time. So, um, I want to do three. I'm going to, I'm going to do three to after six here. We're going to do it at, uh, nine, uh, 90% tempo. So we look in, 116 times 9 point uh oh 116 times point 0.9 we're going to go at 104 here we go
Everything cool? Yeah. So, good. Great. Great. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> somebody else should comment who knows this piece decently or just what you think. I feel like that's even a great goal tempo right there. As I was playing it at the 95% tempo, I felt like this feels a little fast. It doesn't feel relaxed. So, um, it says 116 marked in, but I just feel like that's too fast. Anybody want to join in who knows that who knows this piece that'd be great. I'm going to play the opening of it from and the, and this opening rest recitative and see if I can uh do it when I'm a little bit tired to gain a little bit of confidence. Here we go. doesn't build a lot of confidence but that's cool um let's do let's do this section and then we'll be done yeah oh becca can you can you say the website can you put the website on here again that we might use to uh play this piece next week also it's next week so we should probably try to figure that out let's see Uh, all right here we go this section let's do it at 70 percent tempo maybe i don't feel like going super slow here so 126 times 0. 0.7 <laughs> yeah i'm glad that is on the internet forever basically All right. I suppose it's also important that Becca feels like she can actually play this piece too. I'm doubt I doubt she's going to want to put this on the internet if she can't play it either. So, we'll see how it we'll see how it gets put together. 126 times 0. 0.7 88 beats per minute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Chris Larios, yes, I get those texts. And they are a little bit distracting, but I have a mind of steel and the focus of someone who is very focused. So, Jeffrey, why don't you return my text, man? It can't avoid me now that you're in my live stream. Um, okay. Does anybody have any questions about anything? Uh, this has been an awesome process and to have learned this piece finally, you know, it's one of those pieces that you may, you know, avoid um, from time to time. Thinking, I'm going to learn a new piece of music. You're like, what about the Jolove? And you pull it out and you just go, I don't know. This plus the etude, the weekly etudes have been great for me um, to just force myself to learn new music and ask myself, how can I be efficient? So if you're somebody out there uh, listening to this right now, whether you're listening to it now or if you're uh, listening to the archive thing and you're hearing these words right now, uh, consider this. Um, really forcing yourself to do things outside of your comfort zone is the only way you're going to grow. And I feel like I've grown... Uh, I've grown considerably in this process and you know it's interesting I find myself playing better at work not necessarily because I'm preparing you know any more intensely for the actual job but I'm just in much greater shape because I have to stay in shape to be able to do the Joel of a and to be able to play these etudes on a regular basis so um, sort of forcing myself to do this has kept me in a shape where I'm able to sound my best at all times um, and that's like you know a full-time job for a lot of people they're gonna you know they're gonna stay in great sh great shape and stuff like that and that's awesome um, but not always sometimes you think all right this is an easy week it's Beethoven 5 I might not have to go I don't have to knock myself out with trying to stay in crazy shape or the flip side maybe it's Mahler 5 and you're thinking I really shouldn't play that much outside of the job at all to make sure I'm ready for all the rehearsals and things like that and so this has been a kind of a nice way to have a constant thing to work on um, in this process. So, um, I've been thankful for that. I've been thankful for all the support that I've received. Um, Patrick Oliver, did you see the deadlift challenge at the Arnold Clactus? I assume you mean the, if they break the record, it's the $50,000, um, the $50,000 prize or whatever it is to break the record. Um, there's a guy who messaged me the other day, or yesterday, I guess it was, his name is Salvador. He was here earlier. He asked me to talk about chamber music. I don't know if Salvador is still here, but he asked me to talk about chamber music. And uh, the question was a little confusing, but what I gathered from it is just... They have to lift five. I did not see that. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to read the question again here. Wait. I'm going to read the question again here. I think it was something to do with, like I said, with chamber music and come on. Salvador. I want to make sure I get this question right. That's why I'm taking a second here. Your technical difficulties and balance suggestions. Basically, like how do you work on something like the Brandenburg when you have a, like maybe you have a job or just work on the Brandenburg in general or uh, chamber music? Because obviously chamber music, chamber music and in general is significantly more difficult I think than any of the orchestral repertoire and um, as a result working on and I've played the Brandenburg a couple of times now so I'll speak specifically to the Brandenburg anybody in case anybody wants to know that I'll speak specifically to how I prepared on the Brandenburg to feel like I um, did well and basically what I did was I did not practice nearly as much as I normally would have. So I played the Brandenburg. Uh, I played with Gunther Schuler with, before he passed away, which is like an incredible opportunity now, knowing what I know. Um, I played it for, um, and with the Knoxville Symphony. And then I played it two times with the Masabi Symphony Orchestra. A good friend of mine conducts that group. And then I played it uh, last, so almost a year ago, with the Malaysian Philharmonic. And it the first two times I did it I played the piccolo a lot right I played it a ton and when I got to the performances I felt like I was basically shot and I couldn't play as maximally as I wanted to 
So when I had the next Brandenburgs, they were separated by a solid like two years or something like that. And uh, when I came back, I basically just barely played. I would play the piccolo for at most 10 minutes a day. And what I realized from that is it's a very important realization that I had was the piccolo is like a high intensity thing, but rarely are we playing for a significant chunk of time. So really, we just need to be able to play up there comfortably, and it kind of takes care of itself. So the first thing we have to do is learn how do I play up in the upper register, and especially how do I play up there and tongue. So I recommend slurring a lot and then trying to lightly tongue to figure out how do I tongue like it so it feels like a slur. For those of you that have seen my Magic 3 video, it's steps one and steps two. Also, just not playing as loud. David Hickman gave me some suggestions when I played for him a lot of years ago about you want to try to play almost so soft that no notes speak and learn to play from that place. So this is going to be an A piccolo, but something like this. Of course, you never play it that soft for real, but if you feel comfortable playing it that soft, then just adding a little bit makes it 10 times more comfortable. Right? So that's a good thing on that. Um, and then the last thing I'll say about it, again, is you want to do short chunks with lots of rest instead of long periods of time. Because it's so hard on your face that nobody, no, nobody, except for like Maurice Andre, nobody has the ability to just like pound away on the piccolo and be effective and efficient at it. So really quickly, I'm going to play through the warm up that Barbara Butler taught me that uh, I've adjusted it slightly for to help me, but this is a warm-up Barbara taught me, um, and I use it every time I warm up for the piccolo, every single time, and I feel like it really gets me ready. Um, and I'll play it, and then I'll kind of explain what's going on with it. Chris, I would love to do that. I'm too shot to do that, but I did enough to explain it. So you play the first five notes and you go up to the C. So F, da 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 da, F, G, A, B flat, C. You hang on to the C and what you're trying to do is build up as much energy as you possibly can, um, the much airspeed or whatever. And then as you descend, you're trying to keep that. And then you sort of almost rebound and come up. And you're basically trying to make it so you're getting all of the piccolo to feel like it's the same exact thing. And then I add that note on top to sort of just make it so, oh, I went up to the F, but the G is no problem. Oh, I went up to the F sharp, but the G sharp is no problem. You're not trying to play any of this incredibly loudly. You're not trying to like go crazy. You're just trying to, Barbara would call it streamy. You're trying to be as streamy as possible. And so... 
you want to play because as she would say all every note on the piccolo is a high note so you have to play it with that kind of verve and excitement you can't play low and then high if you're someone who plays the piccolo and you feel like it's just super far apart that's because you're playing the low register like it's a low register and the upper register like it's an upper register and you're having to 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 make a shift that should not exist on the piccolo so i'll play it one more time to kind of demonstrate that a little bit more I'm just a little bit too tired to really show it off. So I don't know, maybe I'll make a video about it if somebody wants me to make a video about it. But, um, and then in general, especially with chamber music, so I'm trying to go back to that question and answer it to the best of my ability. But in general, chamber music, because it's so, like the, the considerations can be so much more technical. I think practicing it slow, just like we have on this live stream is even more imperative. When you play something like Prokofi of Romeo and Juliet, many of the solos are not that technical. So you can kind of just read them. But when you play chamber music or a solo like the Jolive, you can't just read it. And so learning it deeply is a super important part of this process. Um, Salvador, send me a message uh, if that helps. And if that doesn't answer your question, I, I will continue to try to. Patrick, steal that bit all you want, man. Try it out for yourself. I think it works incredibly well. Uh, when I'm not shot, I feel like I can get up to A, B flat, and Bs on a B flat pick, and it feels like kind of okay. So in A, playing that up to A feels okay some most of the time. And I think it's because I've just slowly taught myself through that exercise what does it even feel like to play an A, and then my chops know how to do that. So... Uh, Raul is the Tomberg next. It can be next. I'm not really sure. Um, my plan in anybody, I would love people to weigh in on this. Uh, Twitch.tv is a streaming platform that exists and the quality I think is better. The experience of streaming is better. Um, and so I would like to switch over to that. And so do two streams per week, do one on Twitch and one on Facebook. So on Facebook, I would continue learning another piece of music. And on Twitch, I would do etudes or excerpts or, you know, fundamentals, like more teaching or whatever you want to say. So it's always different. Um, uh, but I could do the Tomberg next on, uh, on Facebook. That was obviously if you, I'm sure, I don't know if you knew or if you were aware, but that's the other piece I suggested when I put a poll out and people picked the Joel of Ace, So, um, it could be next. Right. Yeah. See, he knows what's going on. So also, um, if you have an Amazon prime account, you can subscribe to a Twitch prime account for free which means I get support, I get support, you don't have to pay anything extra for it, and it's awesome. Did I do, oh yeah, I did do that. Um, I'm gonna unpin this comment because it's very confusing. Um, yeah, is there any other questions about anything? I appreciate all the support through this process. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna work with Becca to see if we can play this piece on stream together next week. I hope everybody has been checking out my podcast. The most recent episode about my successes and failures and some funny stories is like a very personal episode to me, and so it's something that I really enjoyed putting together. And I hope that it um, was either entertaining, maybe even. Um, you know, was helpful in some ways to think about failure in such a positive light rather than thinking about it as like a black mark on your record. Is 12 weeks ideal to learn a piece? Uh, all right, Patrick, I will. I don't know. I don't think 12 weeks is ideal, Raul. I kind of just was like, I don't know if I want to practice the Jolivet indefinitely on stream. So I just picked 12 weeks as a metric for I'm going to do it for this long. When I first started, I was thinking, I'll just do it for 12 weeks. We'll see how far I've gotten in 12 weeks. And then we'll 
maybe even be able to say this is what's like realistically possible in 12 weeks. I didn't really necessarily think I was actually going to be able to learn the whole piece in that period of time. So what I've proven to myself is two things. One, uh, I think uh, a period like a, a specific period of time is hard to gauge depending on the individual's um, abilities. But I think if you practice really smart, you might not need nearly as much time as you think you do. So, um, and again, to, to practice this, you could just do any etude whatsoever. Pick Charlie A9, right? I recorded a, a little clip of that on my Instagram and put that up. Pick Charlie A9 and say, I'm going to spend two weeks at learning this etude, but I'm going to practice it slow at first. A lot of times, you know, you could even apply that. Um, I, I put earlier in the stream, I put a, a, a link to a practice, sa uh, a sample practice template for Petrushka. Instead of that, put the different sections of Charlie A9 in there and, and see if that works. You know, I, I think like trying something like this out to see like how fast can I learn a piece of music and learn it deeply is a, is a useful thing, especially as a younger person because you have so much more time to uh, tweak it. You know, so when you do get a full time job or something like that, that you have learned, OK, I can do extra recitals. I can do extra types of things because I know my process. Um, so I don't know if that hopefully that answers your question. I've been on a D load, which is I haven't been working out for the past 10 days. Uh, I ended a program. And so tomorrow um I'm going to start working out. So look to my Instagram for some baller working out videos. Did I listen to any recordings? Uh, for this particular stream, no. I Well, uh, that's a lie. I listened to Maurice Andre's recording right before I, I played the very first stream just so I had some sort of an idea of how fast certain sections would go. Because I know, I know some of the sections pretty well, but I don't know the whole piece that well. And so I just wanted an idea for Tempe. Um, I heard Chris Martin perform this when I was in grad school in like 2011 or something like that. And um, like I said, Maurice Andre's recording is the one I listened to, but then I listened to a couple other ones like Chase Hawkins has one on YouTube from an NTC. And I just did that to see like, are there differences in the recordings or is it like, does everybody take the same tempos? You know, what's the uh, range, so to speak. But I didn't really listen to a lot of recordings Um at this stage in my career, I like to try to approach it based on like, this is what I think it should sound like. And I'm not saying I'm the most informed player, but it's forcing me to make those decisions from a, from an, inf as informed a place as I can make it, which I think forces you to have at least thought through your, um, process. Clement Sonnier's recording. I will check that out. Oh, I lied. I also listened to, um, what is his name? I think it's like, let me find it. Concertino. Pacho Flores. I, I don't know how I had never heard of Pacho, but good Lord, it was the like one of the most amazing things I've ever heard in my life. So check that one out on YouTube as well. Uh, he just plays it as good as it could possibly be done. So, and then, you know, when I was a lot younger in grad school, or sorry, undergraduate school, I listened to like Sergei Nikaryakov's recording and stuff like that. So, yeah, Corey was here when I found that recording. We were, I was like, who is this guy? And Corey was like, he's basically like one of the most amazing trumpet players on the planet. So, um, yeah. This is, uh, good. All right. Is everybody, uh, everybody, I hope you're going to have a good night. Um, as always, I'm here if you need me um, to answer any questions. I love doing it, so please don't hesitate to reach out if there's any of any questions. <laughs> uh, sure, well, well, just one second. I'll see. I might even have it still. Yeah, right there. So you click on that, and you'll see that it says, like, Petrushka. And then it'll say day one, or say week one, and then day one. And then it'll say how many repetitions of Petrushka you should do that day. 
and then day two, how many repetitions you should do that day. And then it takes you through four days a week for three weeks and then then you perform it. And and it's just like a it's it's not necessarily the most definitive way to practice this way, but it is a way to say this is what it would be like to practice a percentage based and b more repetitions at slower at slower speeds, less repetitions for higher speeds, right? And um just to test it out and see, does it work for you? What does that do for you? You know, I think everybody should try it one time and say, does this work for me or is that not my style? But I think everybody can get something from it. So um, check it out. Um, this upcoming week, there will be a preview. Uh, Jim Sullivan, our principal oboe in the Alabama Symphony, a little preview of his interview that will come out on March 1st of my podcast. i um, very excited about that. He's an amazing musician, and his interview is uh, it's just like uplifting, positive, and inspiring. Oh, I'm going to say one last thing for sure. Uh, if Again, if people have questions, keep throwing them out there. But uh, I, I've made a decision in my job, in my orchestra, to instead of just warming up on stage and then hanging out backstage and just like sitting there and like chatting around or whatever, it, to go out into the lobby and talk to patrons as they come in. No one, no one from management or anything asked me to do it. I was just like, I should do this. Like, I feel like I could do that and still be able to warm up and still feel comfortable to do my job well. So I go and talk to uh, patrons, and it's been so cool, actually, because you talk to these people, and they are like, this is great. I'm really enjoying what you do. And you find out that there's people who have some, like, who enjoy you or your section or your, your orchestra a lot. And it kind of has put me in this more positive space instead of being like, I got to play this piece again, even if it's incredible repertoire. Once you play a piece over and over and over and over again, you know, it's, it's easy to, it's easy to uh, sort of get like, not negative, but just be like, this is, um, like I said, not negative, but think, Oh, this is like, I got to do this again. Or I got to, you know, I can't wait to go home or, you know, you're just thinking about other things. But when I've talked to people, now I know that there's people out in the audience and they're thinking about, um, I know that they're like, they like the trumpet. So now I'm playing for myself, I'm playing for my colleagues, but I'm also kind of playing for these people that I know that are out there. And like I said, it's put me in sort of this more positive, uplifting, uplifted mood of like, I really want to like play really well for another reason. So anybody with a job listening to this, I highly recommend doing it if you can get away with it. And anybody who will get a job, I think it makes a big difference for the patrons. So um, that being said, I think that's where we're going to end the stream. Uh, I'll be, I'll be around like, you know, giving timestamps for this thing. So if anybody has any questions, I'll be around to answer them. So I hope everybody has a good night and thank you so much for watching. And we will see you next week for the ultimate conclusion of this piece. All right. Bye.